And we're here with the Cambridge University Eco Racing Team who have put together this wonderful vehicle that's going to be going on the Australian 3000K race. Um, tell us a bit about the vehicle. So this is our solar powered vehicle that we've built to compete in this, as you say, 3000 kilometer race across the Australian outback in October. And we spent the last year uh, at the University of Cambridge designing and building this car. Uh, well, as you can see, it's very different from a normal car. Uh, and so all the bits that are different, we've had to really design ourselves and, and make this almost from scratch, right the way from the uh, awesome aerodynamics to the, the, the in-wheel, front-wheel motor to the ultra-efficient uh, solar cells. Everything about this car is, is new and is different and is very exciting and we've had to do it from a very as an early stage. How long has it actually taken you to build this vehicle? Well, the concept for this vehicle happened in October last year, and the, we're racing this vehicle in October this year. So that's a year from concept to race, which I think you'll agree is a, a very, very quick development cycle. What sort of technical challenges have you had to overcome in building this vehicle? The biggest technical challenge for me has been just how little power you get from the cells. Despite this enormous area of solar cells, you only get about the power of a hairdryer on this car. So to drive a car on the Australian motorways, which is what this race is, on the power of a hairdryer is extremely challenging. What sort of speeds can we expect from this vehicle? We're hoping to get up to 50 to 60 miles an hour, uh, but we'll have to see, and it depends on the weather as well to a certain extent. We had the car in, in the environmental testing centre here at, at Ford, at Ford's technical centre in, in Dunton, and we put the car in Australian conditions, so in uh, as, as bad as we think it could get in Australia, so 45 degrees C ambient temperature with strong Australian sunlight, and we had the car running and Kento, the driver, in there for an hour, and uh, he survived, and he survived the concentration test that we gave him and he came out hot but alive and so we're, we're, it's encouraging from that point of view and, uh, and it's just a question of getting out to Australia nice and early having lots of practice and seeing how long can we drive this car safely swapping drivers keeping well hydrated wearing the right clothing and, and ensuring you've got adequate ventilation can we see some of this technology filtering down do you think into some more commercial cars in years to come yeah I mean that the, the sort of bigger purpose of this as well as being a, an exciting race and an interesting student project is that some of the technology that's underneath the solar panels uh, is directly applicable to, to, to electric cars appearing on the road, even hybrid electric cars. Um, so there's, there's uh, technology that we're developing as part of our master's research projects at the university um, for this car, things like battery management, uh, motor control, um, cruise control and the kind of um, optimization of uh, the vehicle speed um, all of those things could could very easily come from this car and move into uh, move into a road car uh, that could appear in the next few years do you want to tell us a bit about the motor um, okay so it's a permanent magnet brushless DC motor um, which basically means that it's got um, a coil of wire shaped like a donut inside and that's held on the axle so it's still and you've got three phases going into that um, and what happens is the outside of the motor which holds the tyre um, actually has two rings of magnets, neodymium magnets um, and the motor controller which is a very nifty bit of kit that um, the actual guy designing the motor, Richard Hall, has been working on um, will, is capable of tracking where the magnets on the rotor are. It's 98% efficient, which is, which is very good. So that is about the pinnacle of, of electric motor technology. I'm Tony Pennell. I'm one of the uh, professors at Cambridge. And uh, my day job, if you like, is working for the FIA, making the rules for Formula One. Technologies like this, at, at first sight, they don't look remotely practical, but... Uh, it takes an awfully long time for a, a new technology to arrive at the car you buy in the street. And in the years to come, with the tremendous pressures we have on su sustainability, this sort of technology and many technologies like it are going to filter their way down to the car we, we buy. And of course, um, we, we're absolutely going to have to face a future where uh, everything has to be sustainable and solar power <laughs> doesn't get more sustainable than that. Do you reckon we could introduce maybe a solar percentage for Formula F1 cars? Give it a few years. 
<laughs> yeah, so a few years yet, they, they're they a bit res res resistant to even the first step towards uh, ecology uh, support, so the, it will come. <laughs>